So a couple months ago, I asked you guys about university life. I asked you to come up with questions for my Chinese students to answer in class. And I said that I would put their answers in a video. Well, here are their answers in this video as I go about my day at Chuan Da. And they've also left questions for you, questions about your university life. Now, I know a lot of my viewers, a lot of you guys are in your 30s and 40s. So you went to university a while back, just, just like me. And um, it's, it's been a while, but please try and answer them anyway, because I would, I would love to screenshot your comments, your answers to their questions, and show them in the next class, which will be next Thursday and Friday. So please leave those as soon as possible. They don't have to be super thorough, but just any kind of response I think would be really good because they are fascinated by the idea of having a conversation with a stranger in another country about something that's applicable to their lives. Um, yeah, please leave those. It's the middle of Friday. I've gone through about 10 classes. I got four more to go. I got 14 a week. And the students aren't really comfortable answering questions on video. So I've collected a bunch of these on paper. They're more than happy to answer these questions on paper and uh, through verbal discussions and things like that. So I will give you their most common answers and the most common points that have just kind of come up. After taking all the students' answers and kind of looking through them, I've compiled kind of a list of all the most common answers to your questions on my computer. And I'm just gonna kind of read them off to you and let you know what their lives are like. So let's go ahead and get into it. A good question that stirred a lot of debate is, is college easier than high school? Because that is sort of the stereotype. But my answers were kind of different. The students did say on the yes side, they said it is easier because we have a lighter course load. We can do what we like, when we like. And then the uh, one of the quotes I have is, you need to be self-conscious to have a colorful life and find your path which is interesting because it's a, it's a different sort of, uh, of burden on the students. And that is kind of the key difference that the students made. They said the courses are more difficult, even though there are less of them. And there are other things to worry about besides study. There's a student union managing their own time, living on their own. And the thing that came up a lot was, no, actually, College is more difficult. It's just a lie that's told in order to motivate students for the gal count. <laughs> so it's a conspiracy. And two quotes that I have here from students said, I'd go back to high school without hesitation. Ooh, all right. Um, the other quote that I have here is, I need to learn how to live. So yeah, that was a good distinction that they made. And the question that dealt with the cafeteria food, the best food that they voted on was uh, wontons, uh, chow show like little dumplings that are in oil. And then the other one is, um, Mao Thai, which is like uh, meat and vegetables boiled in a spicy kind of soup. And then uh, it's put in with a bunch of more spices and things like it's a very flavorful dish. It's sort of in that vein with like hot pot and chuan chuan kind of thing. How do universities help students find jobs upon graduating? Well, my students are freshmen, so they don't really know. But the ones that did know say that uh, there is an on-campus job fair every single year. And also there is apparently an, a, a department that deals with this. It's called the Entrepreneurship and Employment Department. So SCU apparently does pretty well with helping students in that regard. Asking students what their average week was like is it produced a lot of different answers depending on majors. So let's go through uh, a few of them. Uh, one quote that I have is, in our oil painting department, I do teach painting majors, um, in our oil painting department, we have two days to have major classes. The rest of the time we can choose some electives. We have 15 classes a week and about 60% of our time is for study. So that's for one major. Other majors come out with things like, we never hang out with each other on the weekdays. We have about three hours a week to hang out. So they're obviously a lot busier. Uh, others say we kind of, they budget their time differently. We have one hour a day to hang out, or we just take a whole week, or sorry, a whole day per week to hang out. And that was pretty common. They spend six days of their week studying or in classes, like really hitting the books. And then they have one day where they kind of do whatever they like. Other classes say that uh, they have five classes per day. Each class is 45 minutes and nights are for homework or games. And as far as video games and computer games go, they play League of Legends, Hearthstone, Dota 2, and PUBG. Those are kind of the big ones that I noticed through a lot of the answers. When asking students about what Chinese students think of foreign universities, they tended to come out with uh, they're more expensive, there's more freedom for students to change their majors or to take elective classes, and also there's more 
kind of focus on social activities rather than just study, study, study. I feel like that's pretty true. A question I don't really like because I don't really agree with the premise is why do Chinese students not like answering questions or participating in class? I don't feel like it's a good question to begin with because I find Chinese students do participate in class. They do like answering questions if you frame them in the right way or anyway, let's get into their answers. Uh, nobody wants to make mistakes in front of the class. Uh, no one wants to lose face. Face is a big thing here in China. If you don't know face, I'll put a link to the Wikipedia down below. A quote that I have is, we need to listen to the teacher and keep quiet for a long time in class. Meaning that when a teacher actually wants a question answered, students are in kind of listening mode and they don't know like, ah, should I actually answer? Or are they gonna answer the question themselves? Other students said, sometimes the questions are too hard or they're too easy, like they're badly framed questions. Shyness and modesty, um, both of those are, are virtues in China. They're considered virtues in China. Uh, and the other quote that I have is, our tradition says, listen more, ask less. It's very Confucian, right? <laughs> as far as campus life at SCU goes, the answers kind of look like this. Uh, dorms and showers, not so nice, not very nice. The showers and the bathrooms, the shower and the toilets, the same room and the, it gets damp apparently and it's not nice. Time is pretty limited. They've got tight schedules, some of them. Uh, the cafeterias and the classrooms are, are really good. Classrooms are well equipped. Uh, the food is really, really, really oily in the cafeterias, which is true. Even my Sichuan students say it's, it's far too oily. There's pools of oil um, under all the things. You spend about five to 10 yuan per meal, which is very cheap. The food is okay. Campus is big and open, but it's really far to get from the dorm to the classroom. It takes about 20 minutes for my students to walk. And then, um, yeah, they, they really like the campus itself um, and the classroom, but yeah, their living conditions are not a huge fan of. They also have like four or sometimes more roommates in one dorm room, uh, which is, that's a lot to have in one room. How did you make new friends when you came to the university for the first time? They said, we met our classmates and our roommates first. And those were the first bonds that they made that were very good. The majors take all their classes together, uh, all their major classes, they're all on the same schedule. They have the same classmates for every single class related to their major. Um, electives, they will of course meet other students. And as they get more integrated in, into student life, apparently they meet their friends later through uh, clubs, playing basketball or other sports uh, and through group homework assignments. So yeah, yeah, pretty good. And the question about allowances, uh, the students get anywhere between 1,000 to 2,000 yuan per month for their living expenses. And that seems to be all right. The average class size at SCU is anywhere between 25 and 100. I've seen answers all in between there. I think the average was about 50. Something I found interesting was about campus accommodation. You can actually choose to live off campus but you have to sort of apply for it. You have to get the teacher's permission or their, I think their advisor, whatever the Chinese equivalent of an advisor is, you have to get their permission in order to live off campus. That's a, I didn't expect that answer. That was, that was interesting to me. I thought it was mandatory for students to live on campus. In terms of clubs, there were actually a lot more than I thought there would be. And uh, I, I found them quite interesting. So they, they have all kinds of language clubs. So any language that people are learning uh, in school, they've got clubs for that. So English, uh, Japanese, Korean, Spanish, and, a few, and French, and a few others. Uh, chess club, break dancing club, Latin dance club, cosplay club, thought experiment, and logic club. That's, that's interesting. Math club, traditional China club, uh, Hanfu clothing club, uh, traditional Chinese clothing, badminton club, ping pong, basketball, all the sports. And there, there are so many more that we could get into. But yeah, I, I found that quite interesting. Uh, there, there are a variety of clubs. And you'll actually see them kind of set up at the beginning of the year to recruit uh, students to their clubs. 
And the last thing that I'm going to talk about is their study routine. They talked about how uh, they, they tend to study and memorize things and, and just learn. But a lot of people talked about doing things like thought experiments. Uh, that's the phrase they used where they, they take the problem and they think of like all of the different possible solutions. And they try to break down which solutions are the strongest and which ones are the weakest. And they try to figure out which ones are the easiest among out of all these. And they do all these others, uh, these other things. They do a lot of group homework, particularly in like the sciences. They do a lot of, in any of the students who are studying um, different languages or anything that's not related to science, they tend to uh, just read out loud or they'll write down new words that they have to memorize. So they'll just, they'll write down a word and they'll say it and then they'll write it again and they'll say it and then they'll write it within a sentence and they'll say the sentence or they'll recite passages, things like this. You'll see this a lot at Chinese universities. Students will have books and they'll be standing there outside walking around just in circles, like reading the book out loud over and over again. That seems to be the most common way to memorize things. And I never see anything like flashcards. I don't see um, a lot of people like discussing things in order to learn like group group kind of discussions where like I would uh, in university, I, I would discuss different problems or things I was confused about with my uh, with my friends and my classmates, but they don't seem to do that here. It seems mostly to be like studying is a thing done by yourself, unless it's the you know science related majors who tend to do things together. So yeah, hopefully those answers have been insightful for you. Uh, I I hope that you learned a little something about. Um, Chinese universities and at least Sichuan University. I, I found it quite good as well because there were a few of the particulars I didn't really know either. So I so I found this quite a productive lesson actually for me as well as them. They were very excited to answer these questions. And they did have questions for you. They have questions for you about your university life. I hope that you can take a couple of minutes and maybe answer like three of these questions. Um, look down in the comments and see what questions have been answered and try to answer different ones because they have lots and lots of questions. And I would love to screenshot your answers and put those um, in my PowerPoint this next week. So here we go. Does your university have a curfew? That's a pretty decent question. In China, most universities have an 11 or 12 o'clock curfew. You can't get into the dorms after that. How much money do you spend per week? Do you have an allowance or do you work along with uh, your study? One of my favorite questions was, does your school have its own culture? Is there anything special at your university? And if so, how is your university different from others? I like that. That's a great question. There are a lot of really basic questions, such as, does your school have an age limit? That's a no, right? Uh, how much is your tuition? Do you have classes on the weekends? How many people live in your dorm room? Do you live with the same people all four years? Or do you change roommates? Uh, what's your average class size? One that the students were very interested in. They were kind of obsessed with this. Do people date a lot at university? Is this a big thing? Like, what is the single to in a relationship or married rate at university? I have no idea how to answer that. Um, maybe just Google it, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. A really good one was, uh, is studying abroad really common in your country? Or is it really common? Or was it, is it, was it common at your university? At mine, it certainly wasn't. Um, it, do you guys study foreign languages at your university? And if so, which languages do you study and how long do you need to study them for? My uni was, uh, we had, I think, Spanish and French. We had to do three semesters. Are mixed dorms a thing? Do girls and guys live together? Uh, or are they in the same building? Like, what does that look like? What's more important to you, study or social activities? Are there many foreign teachers from China at your university? Are there a lot of foreign students from China at your university? And do you learn much about China or Chinese language or Chinese culture at your university? I, I mean, I love these questions. They're, they're really quite good. How much do you spend studying or reading per day? That's a good one. Like out of, if you were to have one class, like maybe a 90 minute class or an hour class, how long do you need to prepare for that class? How much homework do you have? That's a pretty good one. And I think maybe we'll kind of end with like, why did you go to university in the first place? Chinese students feel like they absolutely like have to. It's sort of a goal for every parent to have their child go to a good university. 
and there's not really a why to it. They just kind of go. Uh, so did you have a specific reason for going? Yeah, there we go. There are some of the questions. There are lots more, but I feel like that's probably enough for you guys to answer. So um, please, 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 please take a little time and answer some of these questions. Maybe maybe just take three three quick ones or answer them all if you got a lot of time. But yeah, maybe three quick questions, three quick answers that would really help me out. I would love to be able to help facilitate this conversation between you all and my students. So um, thank you all very much for watching. I hope you learned a lot or a little. I hope you learned something and I hope you enjoyed it. So thank you all again. See you all next time.